our water use efficiency standards workshop number three. Um, next slide, please. We're glad that you could attend. And um, today we're gonna cover a couple different items. Um, we're gonna start with just some tips and tricks on landscape review. Um, we have a case study to go over and then we'll do some question and answers and see if we can share information uh, together. Good trust. You have to, uh, I got an way right behind the... Um, um, somebody's got their phone on, or their microphone on. You know, put on mute unless you're speaking. Um, then we're gonna... Oh, Elizabeth, you muted yourself. We can't hear you. Are you there? Can you hear me yeah, now? Yeah, now we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So the, so the host muted me. I don't know who did that, but um, so um, we'll go over some, some land, landscape area measurements, and then we're going to look at the CII performance measures. Then we're going to look at water loss standards, and depending on time, we'll go into water indoor water use a little bit, and then we'll wrap up. Next slide, please. So just a couple of rules, um, make sure we know who you are. Just make sure your first and last name is up there. Um, turn on your video when you're speaking, that would be helpful. If you're not speaking, um, stay on mute. And then um, you can see the chat panel, we'll have stuff in the chat panel. And if you have a question, feel free to ask the chat panel, panel to ask questions. Next slide. Hopefully everyone's aware and, and and ready to, um, oh, knows how to use Zoom at this point. So the first thing we're gonna start out with a quick poll, a poll area where instructions, there's a link in the chat, I believe. I can, I can walk them through this, Elizabeth. I'm a little okay, more familiar, go just, in. Yeah, so in your chat box, you're gonna have a link and uh, you can click on that. It's gonna open a second browser and we're just gonna take through some interactive um, poll questions that we can all watch or you can all kind of see everybody's responses. So you can copy it down here. Like I said, just click on the one in the chat bar or in the chat box and we will uh, be able to kind of see what everybody is doing. So for any folks that are coming in new, um, it will be just a second. Should be starting. Let's see what's going on here. I'm going to stop sharing my screen just for a second. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you can see here we're kind of finding out where folks are uh, calling in from. Um, we got all the whole state of California or uh, just kind of your, the southern San Diego region, uh, uh, San Diego County water region. Anybody who's just coming in, if, you, if, you aren't, if you're not already signed in, then the chat, you won't see the link in the chat. So I'm just going to post it a bunch of times. So if you see it posted a bunch, uh, don't worry about that. It's just for new folks coming in the meeting. So like I said, anybody new coming in, click on that link in your chat box. It's going to open a different browser. And we're going to go, we're going to be doing these poll questions through the whole thing. So go ahead and leave it open and um, can see what everybody else, uh, all the input. All right, I'll give it a couple more seconds here. Oh, somebody, somebody took theirs off and moved it to somewhere else. Must have, uh, must be driving. Okay, well, I think that's looking pretty good. Looks like the responses have slowed down. Okay, you ready to go to the next question, Elizabeth? Or you wanna give them a couple more minutes? Let's go to the next question. Okay. So I'm just gonna repeat myself a couple more times because there's still folks coming in the meeting, but if you're new to the meeting, there's a link in the chat box uh, that'll take you to a poll. It'll open a different browser. Go ahead and uh, click on that. We're gonna be doing a interactive um, kind of polls throughout the whole thing. So. 
throughout the whole presentation, just leave that open and uh, can understand a little bit better about what other people's experiences what not are. All right, looking good. A lot of water conservation coordinators. Just one more time, a couple more people came in. If you're new, there's a, chat, a link in the chat box. Go ahead and click on that. It's gonna open a different browser, take you to a survey, and we're gonna be doing this through the duration so you can answer questions as they come up. All right, well, that looks like it's uh, slowed down a bit. So we've got, uh, we can do one more question if you're ready, Elizabeth. Okay. So this one, you can select multiple, at least I think that's how I set it up. If not, then I guess you only get one. Um, so what's your largest concern about the WUE targets under development? Um, Well, given the all of the above selection, that's a lot of concern. So I guess it'll be, a, hopefully it's a useful presentation for all of us. Okay, great. Well, um, I think that that's kind of tapered off. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, the PowerPoint back on. But like I said, we're going to have a couple of additional polls throughout. So leave that browser open. And I will turn it back over to you, Elizabeth. Is that sharing? Can you see that? Yeah, we can see it on a key. Okay. No problem. Oh, can't hear you again, Elizabeth. I'm not sure why you're muted. Sorry, that was my fault. Okay. Just some dates coming up. October 2021 um, is when DWR has to make its recommendations to the State Water Resources Control Board. Um, June 20, 2022 is when the State Board will adopt those water use efficiency standards. And then June, January 1 of 2027 is when we have to demonstrate um, um, that we've achieved the water use objective. Next slide, please. Next slide, there we go. And then um, this is kind of just the timeline that the, what's, what's actually happening. Water loss standards were supposed to be done by the um, mid 2020, um, and that's been pushed back several times. Now we're looking about fall of 2021 for the regulations to be completed on those. Um, recommendation and indoor standards. Um, initially, those were supposed to be done in, in January 2021. They've been pushed back to June of 2021. They're trying to rush to get their report done, um, but we're hoping we can get them to hold off on actually making uh, recommendations. And then the residential irrigated lands measurements, hopefully everyone on the call has gotten their measurements. They should have gone out by March, 2021. Um, and then the rest of the dates we kind of looked discussed earlier, um, DWR re makes recommendations to the state board in October. And then um, the adoption of water use efficiency standards help happen in July of 2022. Next slide. With that, we'll turn it over to um, our landscape. Michelle, do you want to introduce um, our, our guest speaker, her? Yes, thank you, Elizabeth. So uh, we're excited for those of you um, that are joining us for the first time today and for those of you that are returning. So this is kind of part two um, of our tips and tricks on landscape. 
So uh, we had our first workshop in February um, on this topic. And so now we're going to transition into kind of discussing it a little bit more. Um, we're really excited to have um, a case study for you today. And then we are gonna have some open discussion time. So our guest speaker today is uh, Jessica Parks. Um, she started um, in the water industry in August of 2000. Um, she's currently the utilities administrator for the city of Poway, and she's worked for the city for a total of 10 years, while also being a native of Poway for 43 years. As Poway's utility administrator, she's responsible for the city's water and wastewater administrative and regulatory division, and the city's water conservation coordinator, and the water resources, water and water wastewater programs manager. So that's a lot of hats um, for Jessica. We're really excited to have her here. Um, so with the next slide, um, we're gonna hear from Jessica again. So we're gonna do a couple more pull EB questions and then kind of open it up for some discussions on how everything's going um, for those of you um, that are analyzing your data as well. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jessica. Thank you. Um, thank you everyone for having me. Um, so this is kind of just an overview of what the city of Poway has been looking at in regards to the landscape area measurements. Uh, next slide. Just a little history about the city of Poway. It was incorporated in 1980, but it absorbed the Pomerado Municipal Water District, which had been around since 1954. So the water system itself is not anywhere near new. Um, we are located in the northeastern area of the San Diego County. We have about 50,000 residents and 14,200 metered connections and deliver approximately 10,000 acre feet a year. We're built out with some rezoning for new residential properties, but when I say we're built out, it's that we have a lot of dedicated open space around us that will not be built upon. So the areas that we can build is pretty much built out. Uh, the utilities department, um, unlike other water agencies, we are under the public works department and managed over uh, in that area. Next slide. So what is it that the city of Poway is focused on? Um, when Poway received its landscape area measurements, it was in the middle of January. And for those of you in the San Diego region, you probably remember seeing an email from me asking, what is everyone gonna do with this? We have to have this done by March 1st. And just to find out that most of you had not received yours. So it was a little concerning, but what we started looking at um, was just that we had to have the data ready by March 1st when we first got it. Like many agencies, we're lean staff. We don't have the resources to suddenly turn out a big project in a short period of time. So we hired Woodard and Kern to help us in looking at the landscape area measurements, looking at you know what, what was our concerns, what comments that we wanna have and submit them by March 1st. Um, luckily that date got pushed. So it's given us more time to actually look into the data. Things that we've been looking though, in regards to our data, we were looking at each parcel data in the beginning only to later decide that that was not the best course to go, nor was DWR assuming that they were interested in hearing about individual parcel data inaccuracies. Um, we started looking at residential properties that were actually being excluded from the LAM. And what we were also looking at was we have plans for new residential construction coming in and how are we going to be able to incorporate them in. We now are starting to look at the variances. We also have some residential agriculture, not much, but enough for us to be able to want to make sure that that is all included into our landscape area measurements. And the last thing that we're kind of focusing on are these five uh, options that DWR has put together for the landscape irrigation calculation. Uh, next slide. So this is the city of Poway. You can see the yellow and black outline. That's actually the boundaries of the city of Poway. Within that, you'll see the blue dotted lines, and that is our water service area. So the area that we have water currently connected uh, to our potable system. Outside of that, we have some wells. We started looking, so DWR is looking at the city of Poway boundaries when they're looking at our landscape area measurements, not the water boundaries, which to us that's okay because those water boundaries are not set in stone. We could move out. So it gives us that flexibility right there. So we've decided just to go ahead and keep the, lands, uh, the area measurement of the city of Poway boundaries with DWR and not have that changed. Uh, things that we were looking at was new development, like I said, 
residential parcels that were in SANDAG but missing from the DWR data set we were looking at, and um, our large residential agricultural communities, which are to the north of Poway. In the south of Poway, uh, we have a business park over there. So you can see that with that business park and then the rest of the city of Poway, we're mainly a residential community. About 70% of our water demands are residential. So when we're looking at residential landscape area measurements, this is something that will affect Poway if we don't have it as close to being as much allocation that the state will give us as possible. And uh, next slide. One of the things that we noticed with our residential parcels was that there seems to be some kind of, um, I guess, uh, little discrepancies in where the boundaries of the properties are. As you can see here, you can see that the street's covered in red, but it's just taken that slice out of the properties on the edges there, which, yeah, thank you. So with that in mind, we're looking at, you know, 70% of our water demands is residential. And when you're cutting out all of those little slices on all of the parcels, that actually adds up to water that we're probably going to need in order to have an accurate allocation. This is something that we're looking at. Um, we will be making a comment to for DWR. Um, I'm not sure how other agencies are looking at this, but this was something that uh, we felt that we need to bring up. Um, if there's going to be any kind of buffer with this, um, we would like to have a lot of that looked at. Uh, next slide. Not that Poway is big on military housing, but we do know that surrounding agencies around us do have a lot of military housing. Uh, this is just one of two that Poway has, and we noticed that it was completely excluded from the residential allocation or residential area measurements. And so we'll be making a comment to have anything like this included. Um, like I said, this property is not very big, but it is something that we wanna make sure that it is included. And if this is something that's reoccurring with other agencies, we wanna make sure that DWR hears that. Next slide. I believe in previous workshops, other agencies have brought this up as well, is these HOA common areas where it's just this little piece of land that has some landscaping or a pool that is, the land is residential and the water is counted as residential, but here it's being excluded from the landscape area measurements for residential. So this will be another comment that we put in. Next slide. Like I had mentioned with a uh, new development. So this is actually a golf course that has been abandoned. For those of you who ever went to the Stone Ridge Country Club um, for breakfasts, this is that property. So this has now been abandoned and we do have plans to have new residential uh, properties put in here. It, it's, it hasn't been very clear to us how DWR is going to allow for us to put in for new construction or growth within any of our agencies. And this is a comment we wanna make sure is heard and hopefully others are making it as well so that DWR understands that this is going to be something that we'll need. If our water allocation is low and we're not meeting it because we're unable to add in stuff like this, then I, I think this should be considered when looking at the total for landscape area measurements in the future and I know there has been some discussion about if it's already like graded, but some of these plans, they're gonna be done within before the next urban water management plan that we've put together. This has been put into our urban water management plan for the 2020. So it, it should be calculated if uh, DWR is gonna be putting anything together by 2024. Uh, next slide. And as I said before, we don't have a lot of agriculture within the city of Poway, but where we do, we, we do have a, a large area in the northern part of Poway. Uh, this was confusing to us because as you can see, this, this whole property is actually a residential uh, agricultural lot. Uh, you can see that it does have the ag lands mask with the green, but some of it's cut out with the brown. And we did wanna point out, if you look in the lower left-hand corner, uh, that's the property, that's the owner's house right there. Thank you. And then this is his agriculture. Uh, 
other communities, other agencies have much more agriculture than we do. So I'm, I'm not sure how they're looking or how their uh, area landscape measurements came out with this, but this is something that was concerning to us because we wanna make sure it's all included. The other thing that you'll see that's a little strange is that our water service area boundary is just uh, below where his agriculture is at. And while that's where the boundary is, his, his water line actually goes up into that area. Um, we, we just wanna make sure that we have this calculated into either as a variance or um, an exception, or if we have to, we could reclassify this water demand as CII if needed. Uh, just so that it's removed from the residential part and put into the CII part. Next slide. Something that we heard about, so with the variances, they're now looking at ponds, but they seem to be more like ponds for supplemental water for ponds for wildlife. However, we just wanted to see how many ponds does Poway have within their residential properties and in order for us to find them, we did have to put a filter on. So that's why it's pink. We were able to better see the ponds with this filter. And it turns out we have uh, over a dozen little ponds like this, but this would be something that we would wanna put into variance for because we don't want these people with ponds to be, you know, I, I guess we don't want it not to be included with the residential landscape area measurements when calculating out the water. Others is, we call these residential recreational fields. It's where the property owns two lots and one they have the house on, but the lot next to them is where they have whatever recreational activities they want. This is considered residential and it's in our billing class as residential. And so we're hoping that we'll be able to put this in as a variance saying that the water that is on this property is part of their landscape for residential. You can see the house and then the little pathway and how it's got some green around it with their basketball court. Um, the next slide, I have something else similar. So if we wanna switch over there. So this one, this one, the, the resident has decided to put a baseball field on the property right next to them. They own it, it's a landscape area. But I wanted to show you that from 2017 to 2020, obviously the irrigation has changed on there. Um, one thing that we noticed, so the property itself has its irrigatable calculation and its irrigated calculation, but next to it doesn't have anything. However, you can see where just on the outskirts of that baseball field, it was obviously irrigated. And so if we are going to calculate this out as a residential property with uh, the residential landscape area measurement, we'll want to have the uh, entire area calculated as irrigatable and irrigated. Um, you can see he also has like a horse corral down there. So we'll wanna make sure that that gets included as well. Uh, it's a very nice property. Um, and honestly, if somebody has the means to put a baseball field on their lot and can irrigate it, then I don't think that they should be excluded from any kind of measurement because of that. Next. So the last thing that we've been looking at is DWR's options to calculate the outdoor water allocations. And they've given us their five options. And it seems very similar to me for those of you who remember when we were doing the 20 by 2020 and they gave us the four options to calculate out what our SBX 7-7 goal was going to be. And it seems like that again, where they've given us all these different options, but um, in calculating them out, there's always just one that's better for us that might not be better for somebody else. But um, I, I feel like they're leaning towards option five, but I just wanted to share with you these options if you haven't seen them or looked at them before. Uh, so option one is just the single outdoor standard base irrigatable area. And option two is the irrigated area. Oh, go ahead. No question. Oh, sorry, I thought someone had a question. Uh, option three is based on a sliding scale. And then if you go to the next slide, it has option four and then option five. Option five 
uh, seems to be where DWR's preference is. And what we did is we went ahead and took a look. Well, when I say we, our consultant did us a huge favor and looked at all of these different options and was able to calculate what was going to be for Poway on their water uh, landscape area measurements. If you go to the next slide, and this is my last slide, so you guys can be done with me here. So here we had them take a look at the different options, option one, option two, option three, we didn't want to do. It's very complicated on this sliding scale. Option four wasn't something we wanted to look at, but option five, option five has this buffer where it increases over the years. So you can see the graph where option five would benefit the city of Poway the best out of those options. The other thing we wanted to look at though was how does this calculate into also the indoor residential side of things. So you can see in the table below, we put in the 55 gallons per person per day. But with any kind of legislation that was also being um, proposed at the time, we also wanted to look at what would that look like as well. So this table here kind of just shows you what how we would be looking at as far as the indoor and outdoor uh, water allocations from the state if we did the 55 or if it was a different number, which here we were going off the AB 1434, 48 gallons per person per day. So with all of this, these are the things that Poway's just been looking at and concerned with. There are things that we are going to be putting in for common fund and there's going to be things that we're gonna be putting in variances for. But we just kind of just wanted to share with you what it is that we're looking at and how um, we're just kind of putting this together. I mean, it, it seems like <laughs> there's no clear way to do this. So um, it has been helpful with these workshops to be able to hear how other agencies are doing things. So I was hoping that this would help others. And that's it from me. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Jessica. So we're going to do two things um, right now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a, um, another poll EV and we have some questions. So to Jessica's point, she was kind of wanting to know, and we've heard feedback from our first workshop that everyone really appreciated figuring out what is everyone else doing? So we did want to um, ask just a few questions along that lines of thinking. Um, and while you're doing that, you can also think if you have um, anything you'd like to share with the group, that could be a question to Jessica on what she shared. Um, it also can be um, any feedback on how your analysis is going. Any of you can you know, speak up and chime in. We do have a few moments um, uh, built into our timeline to our schedule today to allow a group discussion um, for about 15 minutes. So uh, we did wanna have a, you know, an open dialogue um, with all of you that have joined and thank you so much for coming um, uh, today and, and joining us. So it looks like um, so far, um, most people have um, started, but there's a few of you that haven't. So um, again, this is helpful for you, but then also for everyone else to kind of see, you know, how it's going. Um, so. And Michelle, we have a question in the chat if you want to. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, go sure. Start. I can do that. Go ahead while um, everyone's filling in their poll. Okay. Um, let me see, uh, Clay Clifton wrote, I have a question that I sent to DWR but have not received an answer. For parcels where LUC, oh, you can, anyone can read it too, by the way, um, it's in the chat, um, 0010 miscellaneous, uh, are the irrigated and irrigable areas in these parcels tallied with the residential parcels for the total irrigated and irrigable landscape areas? Does anyone know the answer? So I'm gonna pitch that to the group. Um, does anyone happen to know um, an answer to Clay's question or are willing to chime in? You can unmute yourself and uh, chime in if you would like to answer. Uh, Lakeside Water um, has raised her hand. Um, so Aniki, will you um, unmute Jean from Lakeside Water? Or you can go ahead and talk, actually, Jean. I, Jean, I think you can unmute yourself. That's can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank, Thank you, you, Jessica, for that great presentation. Um, I also wanted to add a couple things to Jessica's um, findings. I found everything that Jessica did exactly. Um, I wanted to add the parcels served by adjacent parcels. I found 96 of those in my district. And I also found 186 pools that were missed, and that's definitely needing outdoor water. Um, and if anybody's interested, I found a real easy way to tease out all the missing swimming pools. 
Yes, please. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think that'd be a popular one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so we can share any ideas and suggestions. We're happy to, you know, San Diego could follow up with that. Okay, um, in DWR's layer, they have um, a label uh, or a field of square footage of pool for each parcel from DWR. So I cross-referenced where pool equals zero. And on the Sanjus parcel layer, there's a field pool, yes or no. So I just cross-referenced and queried where one said square footage of pool zero and the county says pool yes, it gave me a list of 277. So I went through all of them looking at one by one and some of them were filled in. I didn't count those or, or were never built. I didn't count those, but I did have 186 missing pools and we're really small compared to all other districts. Great. Yeah, if you're willing to share out like some screenshots or some information about that, I think that'd be kind of helpful. Um, and we'll, we'll call it the tips and tricks from this workshop. And if anybody else has found information that would be useful, that, that would be really great. Um, and then uh, do, uh, and then I see another question um, for, um, thank you, Jean, for chiming in. And did you happen to know the answer to Clay's question? Because nobody else volunteered. Does anybody else know Clay's question? And if not, well, then I guess you have a good one, Clay, and you should be emailing um, the DWR team. Anyone happen to know his miscellaneous question if it's in or if it's out? I got one answer that said that it was probably included because uh, it shows up on the verification portal. So I can just enter those addresses on the verification portal to confirm. But um, yeah, okay. So thanks for the okay. answer. Yep. This thanks is Jeannie much. again from Lakeside. I wanna add that almost every parcel that I know for sure what's being watered and I looked at comparison to DWR and we were undercut on every single one I looked at. Okay, uh, well, thanks for, for adding that in. So I guess we should be double checking, it sounds like, on the accuracy. All right, um, Aniki, why don't you go to the next question and pull EV? Um, and at the same time, um, there's a question for you, Jessica. Um, it says, thank you for having your consultant run the comparisons. What's Poway's current GPCD? Thanks, yeah, so currently we're at 167 residential gallons per capita per day, which is good because our SBX 7-7 was like 200, so. All right, well, there you go. There's your answer, 167. Thank you, Jessica. So, um, and then there's a couple other chat comments. Um, there's one that says, um, DWR mentioned at the last landscape area measurement workshop meeting that issues with parcel boundaries could be addressed. The variance, they're still waiting for details on the variance process. Um, and I see your answer. Thank you for adding the answer in the chat, Jessica. All right, so those are the questions I see so far. Um, and Lindsay, uh, Lindsay Stubick has her hand up as well. So. Oh, okay, Lindsay, go ahead, chime in. Hi, thanks for that really great presentation and for, um, and for just hosting this in general. I think it's really great that you guys are creating a forum for us to share what we're finding. And for inviting us, even though we're not in San Diego, I really appreciate that too. <laughs> welcome from Old Miguel. They're all welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I should have said, my name's Lindsay. I manage the water yeah, efficiency department in Old Miguel. <laughs> I <laughs> well, <that> in there. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, no I know you let, us, you let us chime in last time, and I just wanted to, you know, speak up and just provide you with an update on what we found. Um, I know when I presented last time, we mentioned that you know, we were one of the agencies that was missing anywhere from 10 to 15% of our parcels because of they were either misclassified or otherwise classified or not classified at all. And I just wanted to provide the group with an update because I know that DWR mentioned that they were going to be um, recalculating a lot of those because they recognized that it was a pervasive issue with lots of different parcel data sets. And uh, unfortunately, we haven't received our updated residential uh, landscape area measurements. So we haven't been able really to even begin that analysis of, of looking at, um, you know, what, what our, our landscape area measurements are on file and then compare them to what DWR has, at least in the aggregate, because we're missing such a large portion of our irrigated areas. So um, that is unfortunate, but that's, that's just kind of the update as of yet. Um, however, we are participating in their CII landscape area measurement study and um, DWR just last week or towards the end of last week reached out and wanted to start working with us on some of our data with that. So 
um, just wanted to make the group aware that they're they're actively reaching out and wanting to start you know discussing those dedicated irrigation meters and those TAI mixed use meter areas and the best ways to um, to manage those. Great. Um, well, thank you for your update, Lindsay, and thanks again for volunteering to be a case study uh, last time, and thanks for joining us for Landscape sure. Area Measurement Part 2. Thank um, you. <laughs> great. Um, so, uh, so I'll go back to the poll question. It says, what is your overall opinion of the data quality generated? It looks um, uh, to generate a service area water budget. Again, we're working at the service area level, not at the parcel, so individual parcels might be off, but they're trying to do a global um, but people are kind of looking like we just saw Jessica doing at their individual parcels and, and finding, you know, things that need to be adjusted and hopefully those will get um, addressed. Um, so it looks like um, nobody put their data as acceptable. Um, a few people, um, the, the most people had my data is not too bad, missing a few minor items. And then we have another um, group of you saying my data is poor and missing significant amount of information. Um, there's another um, note in the chat I see from Jean um, um, from Lakeside saying I found many misclassified land use codes that were used by DWR. So it sounds like for those of you, there was a few of you earlier that said that you hadn't started yet. So hopefully this is helpful to you to show kind of what people are finding and that it is, you know, worthwhile taking a look at it because as you can see, you know, we've got some people finding some things, you know, that need some adjustments. So. Um, with that, uh, do we want to go to the next question? And also, we're kind of doing both at the same time, so we get as much feedback as we can. So go ahead and um, work on that poll ED question. And then, um, does anybody else want to chime in on how their analysis is going? Um, have you submitted? Have you not submitted? You know, um, have any issues? We're happy to have anyone else um, chime in on their experience. I have a question for the group. Has anyone else started to look at what their target might be? Like um, Jessica has started doing that calculation. And, and Jessica, what, um, what ETAF did you use for your calculation? Are you gonna bring out the hard question on me now, huh? <laughs> yeah, what, what percent of um, ET did you use? Um, I think we used the 0.7, but I'll have to check. Let me let me get back to you. Okay. Okay. Um, well, there'll be a follow up email. So we'll, it sounds like we'll include some pool information from Lakeside, and we, Jessica, we can add your answer to, unless you find it in the next couple of minutes. Um, we're happy to address that. Um, so. Um, all right. So let's take a look at our answer. What is the greatest challenge with this data? Select all that apply. Um, we're still getting some answers, but I'm seeing a trend um, so far. Uh, we've got three people that say parcels are missing, eight people saying that parcels are misclassified, four people saying parcels are overlapped or voided, um, and then E is none of the above. So it looks like, um, again, if you're doing your analysis, the most popular things are parcels being misclassified and or um, kind of overlapping and voided. So it's definitely a, um, something to look into. Um, as you navigate um, through your data. Um, and I also see another chat saying, um, we want to, um, we, it says, no, we haven't, wait, I found a misclassification codes were used and then it's a no, um, but we want to get a consultant to help calculate our target. So other people, uh, Elizabeth's question was have people calculate the target like Jessica had done and it sounds like not yet, um, but some people are looking for help. Um, and it says, oh, it says yes, but it is heavily dependent on the ETAF. I think that's why um, Elizabeth was asking the question of like, um, if you're gonna do a target, it's like an input. Your ETAF um, is definitely, you know, your percentage, um, can, if it varies, then obviously your calculation will vary. So if it's higher, then your target's gonna be higher. If it's lower, it's lower, so yeah. Um, so something to consider and maybe do a sensitivity analysis, you know, what you assume, um, and then see what your targets would end up being. Um, all right, uh, next question, Anaki. I think we may have one more, or is that the last landscape one? Oh, yep. Um, so this one is, um, how are you conducting your analysis to validate it? Are you using it um, in-house? Are you doing it with GIS staff? Are you using a consultant? 
how are you actually um, approaching this? This was a popular question we got after the last workshop. I can't tell you how many people ask, what's everyone else doing? Wait, how are they doing this? And whatever. So we thought we would just add it as a full question and let you guys um, learn from each other um, how it's currently going at the moment. And so, and I know it's a little bit of a moving target. Some people didn't have consultants, but now they do. So we thought we would ask the question and um, see. Yeah, I, I kind of figured we were going to have a little bit of everything. So right now at the point we have, um, it looks like, Nine, nine people doing an in-house with GIS staff, four people in-house without GIS staff, and four people um, using exter um, an external consultant or vendor. So kind of a little bit of all of the above. Um, so if you're um, wanting or needing a consultant, you guys can chit chat uh, amongst each other or email um, and or, you know, if you're doing it in-house, you know, you guys can connect um, your in-house staff. Um, and um, if, if that's important, then you can reach out to San Diego and try and connect some of you up. Um, if not, it's just interesting to see how people are approaching it. So, um, all right. Uh, I think that was our last landscape question. Correct, Tanaki? I believe it was. And I see a comment from Clay Clifton saying, Mis misclassified land use codes or incorrect land use codes applied or not updated by the county um, assessor's office. So he's feeding back to um, one of the things that we saw that was so incredibly popular was the misclassification. And yeah, it could be by DWR or it could be by you know the input data from the county assessors. And that's a great question when you're looking at it. What's the source of the you know kind of discrepancies? So. Oh, and Gabby wrote in there what consultants are agencies using. So if you're if you'd like to chime in, you can. Um, I know Jessica mentioned hers was Woodward Curran, but if anybody else wants to offer theirs up, um, you're welcome to do so because I know there was three others besides Jessica um, that were using consultants. So thanks for that question, Gabby. Oh, it looks like Christina Olson said Dudex. Um, so at least there's two of them, Woodward and Curran and Dudex so far. All right. Um, and if you have any questions um, for Jessica, here's her contact information. She's willing to connect with you or, you know, talk to you um, more at length. Um, if anything that you saw um, spurred a question either now or afterwards, feel free to reach out to her. Um, here's her contact information. So any other um, comments or questions from the group or any share outs? Um, we're here to, you know, have this dialogue and have this discussion. Um, we've had a lot of good uh, questions so far. Anyone else want to share how it's going or ask a question live? All right, I'm always giving a little bit of a lag just in case, <laughs> um, but I am glad that so many of you um, joined us today. Um, so um, we did again have um, a tips and tricks um, worksheet from last time. If you didn't happen to get that, let us know. We're happy to resend that out. Um, and um, so moving forward, um, so that's the tips and tricks. Um, and if you have any comments or concerns, feel free to you know email that to the San Diego staff and then they can share it out um, to the group so we kind of get the dialogue going. And we will try and follow up um, with that pool, offering the pool classification step um, from um, Dean at Lakeside. Okay, so uh, next steps on the landscape area measurement. Um, June 30th is um, the current deadline. Again, it used to be March 1st, it got moved out. So it's now June 30th to report on data related issues that can affect your standard. And then August 30th is the deadline for DDBR to review the submitted adjustment requirements and deliver the final landscape area measurement data to suppliers. So those are the current dates. Um, and uh, I would say, you know, just keep that in mind. Um, I know some of you are working on it. Some of you I mentioned, I heard we're on track to make that. And some people are like, that's still a lot to get done um, in the next month. So hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, and if you have any other questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, and at the very end of this um, presentation, we also have a list of not only these dates, but all of the dates from all the different standards. Cause I know it's getting a little confusing because there's so many working in process. And that's where we're going next. So this kind of wraps up um, the landscape area measurement um, portion, but then we are going to be covering um, three additional topics today. We're going to be covering um, the commercial um, uh, performance measure standard that will be next. Then we're gonna cover water loss. Um, and then we are gonna do a bonus material depending on how our discussions go on residential um, and then kind of have a nice wrap up and then we'll have a, a roadmap of all the different meetings. So with that, um, we are going to allow um, a five minute break. We're gonna be nice 
I know everyone likes to check their emails or voicemails, whatnot, or stretch bake. So we are, it's um, 2.17. So why don't we give you guys five minutes? So at 2.22, we will come back and we will start the CI performance measures. It just allow you guys a quick stretch bake. Oh, and I noticed that um, uh, Joni just posted a handout for the tips and tricks. So if you did not get the tips and tricks last time, you feel free to download it out of the chat. And you can also spend your five minutes reviewing that. Um, so with that, uh, we will see you back um, at uh, 2.22 in about five minutes. Well, welcome back. I hope you had a nice little stretch break. Uh, so our next section is going to be um, developing recommendations for the commercial performance measures. So um, I am Michelle Madaus um, from Madaus Water Management. Uh, I will be presenting today uh, with Lisa Madaus and we are um, a family-based firm. We are based in um, Northern California, but work all over the country um, and a lot in California. Um, we uh, specialize in water conservation. We also do water demand forecasting, we do commercial water audits, water loss, pretty much everything related to water conservation. Uh, we are the main authors of the AWA um, manual M52 conservation planning. A lot of us um, know us from that, but um, ultimately we're very passionate about conservation. We are currently supporting the Department of Water Resources to help with um, the CII performance measures. That's why we're presenting this to you today. Um, we have given two workshops so far, um, and we have a third one coming, so it'll be kind of towards the end, but we're excited to be here. This will be a short summary of what's been accomplished in the two meetings so far, and also a vision of what's going to be coming soon. So um, with that, um, we're really um, looking forward to having some dialogue. Um, similar to the last section, we will have um, kind of a case study you know, type summary slide portion. Uh, we do have some poll EV questions, um, and then we will also have um, some time for open dialogue um, on the subject as well. So with that, um, I'm gonna um, have Lisa um, start us off, um, and then I will um, chime in as well. 
um, to kind of give us a great overview of what we're doing um, to support the area of commercial BMPs um, with uh, DWR at this point. Thank you, Michelle. Good afternoon. Yes, we uh, there is an ongoing, I guess, review and study investigations in the area of CII connected to the 2018 Making Conservation Way of Life legislation. Um, the review of that section is actually on page 10 of the DWR primer. Um, for those of you that have that document handy, I have one sitting on my desk <laughs> that uh, I'm regularly referring to. But uh, they're in a stakeholder process right now with the a performance standard measures uh, work group and the water use studies uh, work groups. Um, there is a meeting next Monday. Uh, and it goes over um, the best management practices and other performance measures. I'm going to be reviewing those and Michelle too. Uh, the next step after we do the investigations is DOR is due to return in a legislative report in October. Uh, the CI is one element of that report with recommendations to the state board that are due to be adopted next year and then urban suppliers move into the implementation mode. Next slide. Uh, the performance measures, there's um, a large list and the performance measures include uh, CII classification system, implementing new technologies, including best management practices. Uh, it also is connected to the CII dedicated meters. And overall, they're outside the scope of the calculation of the water use objective, uh, but there are um, going to be requirements to address CII in some way. Uh, and so that's where we are in the investigation phase of well, what does that really mean? Uh, the part that I'm going to focus on is really about the CI BMPs, uh, but you're welcome to ask us other questions. And uh, there is all the information posted on your shareholder uh, website in the stakeholder space that you can look back at the presentations we've done thus far. But we have put out actually the potential, um, a list of CI uh, conservation measures. Uh, the intent there is that it will be a large library or menu of ideas. And then as you look at it as the water provider, you would select measures that seem best appropriate for your service area and then do, you know, a uh, some level of implementation. So and then this obviously the voluntary CI users are the ones to select and they are voluntarily, you know, implementing the conservation measures. And so that's kind of the flow um, that the, the main role for you is right now, I think making sure that the BMPs that are listed or the classification systems that you are discussing, you know, make sense or can be feasible. Next slide. So we are, um, there is some mention in the law and it's um, in section 103. 609 uh, that you of the water code that uh, there be some consideration of thresholds by size or by volume of how you connect with your CI customers. Uh, it, you know, we're recognizing that obviously there's a really diverse space in CI with your service area characteristics. Some utilities have next to none, or we actually work with some utilities that have no commercial customers. They're completely residential. Um, and uh, and some have a large volume of uh, LADWP has over 80,000 CI customers. So, you know, we obviously have extra large to very small to none. Um, and so whatever we come up with must be flexible, adaptable. And our concept in our work and in other research, um, like at the Water Resources Research Foundation and others, is that you can focus on top users and capture a lot of the conservation potential. So that's um, what we've been discussing um, and presented on. We did in our first workshop in March uh, about the essentially you know, research is shown that a lot of the top 10 or 20% of users are um, of, by volume will capture the majority of your water use. And same with um, 
if you do a list of your top 100 or top 200 users, you would capture the majority of your water use if you're kind of a medium size or large size utility. So that's, we wanna discuss more about that. We'll be presenting some of that next slide. So our uh, role in this project and one area that we'd like your support to focus on is we're developing and we're asked to write a technical white paper is what feasible and kind of pragmatic CIBMPs look like. Um, we are gonna have a portion of the purpose and actually today is going out in a work group uh, workshop that's happening on Monday is a preliminary draft outline for our white paper. So now is the time to participate with us and make sure that we have the outline right. Um, the deliverable right now has been an outline. You see in the orange box there in a literature review. So coming soon, you'll uh, be able to comment on that on Monday with us and following up with DWR. Uh, we are including and have posted a survey on the BMP uh, measures list uh, in the link on the right is a um, we're going to be showing some of the preliminary results of a survey um, and we'll be if you've not taken the survey yet we would like you to do that we would also have a request that uh, if you have any case days or experiences with CI programs what's worked what's not worked uh, we're very open to putting those in our technical white paper uh, and overall the you know, the concept is to try and seek out the right opportunity for conservation potential. Uh, and, you know, that helps reduce your production, can help with your overall meeting your water use objectives. Uh, but there's going to be no performance standard per se in terms of targeted water savings. They left CI out because of the economic productivity, you know, of the CI sector. They're not looking to constrain, you know, growth in the CI sector, which could mean increased productivity of water use, even though you're becoming more water efficient. So it is, the metrics are hard and it's a complex sector to address. So kind of our concept is to help focus the effort. Typically the top 20% or use about 80% of the water. So that's kind of um, where we're kind of headed and that you'll be able to customize your program options. Next slide. So we did do a, uh, uh, we put out a BMP survey. We've asked for feedback. Um, it was distributed in March. Uh, we did get some key responses back. Um, we have more than two dozen agencies that have responded. Uh, we would definitely like to see more. We would like to see too, a holistic perspective. If you're not doing a CI program, the survey is set up where you can give us and you'll see the choices coming up in the draft results that we're going to share out so you can have a flavor for kind of what the findings are so far. Uh, we would like to know if you don't have a program, but you are planning a program. So it's in the right, you know, um, focus area of the BMPs list. Is it comprehensive enough? Are there things you see that are missing? Are there things that you think are completely infeasible and should be removed from the list? So we do have some plenary results. They included both wholesaler and retailer um, the legislation itself calls out audits and water management plans in particular is BMPs, and then it goes through some general BMP measures. So the survey is definitely still open and we want um, responses. Um, we intend to leave it open uh, for probably till the end of the month. We're gonna make another call for responses next week. Next slide. So here is, um, for example, a question about AMI and who's implemented AMI. And so those that participated, um, there was a, this was a 19 agencies that told us that 48% uh, of them are half, almost half had already put in CI, um, AMI, including their CI customers. And the other categories for all the surveys are, it was implemented as a high priority lower priority, feasible, but considering it. So that would be like piloting, not useful and removed from the list. Next slide. So CI rebates are replacing inefficient equipment. So that would be your standard um, things like uh, rebate for a conductivity controller, um, CI, it's mostly indoor um, fixtures on a lot of the ideas in the list. You'll see there's some detailed indoor and outdoor split for the um, BMP measures. 
but a uh, lot of uh, activity in the incentive area for rebates, more than uh, three quarters. Next slide, 75% like of utilities that participate in the survey. So water savings performance program, that's one where you basically are like cost sharing or you're paying for the savings back as a, um, a means to participate in a program. Those a lot of times are custom customers or larger customers where you're paying back the water um, in terms of a rebate value that you've calculated instead of giving them more of a device related um, type rebate. So in this case, you can see um, a, the majority of people are either already implementing it over a quarter or they're considering it. <clears throat> so, and that's, we find that many utilities are running both types of programs. They're running both a menu type program or a rebate center program or then they also have a custom program. Next slide. So this is the top CI users program and that would be the kind of targeting um, for those top 20% using 80% of the water type program. And we saw again, uh, more than half of the utilities are, are doing that now. Next slide. So, and then uh, there was a lot of activity on the outdoor uh, for the responses, both in the outdoor surveys and in the outdoor financial incentives and landscape upgrades. So this was uh, really one of the dominant findings is that there was more savings in the outdoor space for incentives and things. Next slide. I think it's Michelle's gonna talk to you more about audits and water management plans focused VMPs. Great, um, thank you, Lisa. So yeah, we are going to um, do a little bit deeper dive in a couple of slides specifically on these two topics. Again, Lisa mentioned earlier, they were specifically called out um, in the legislation, not that we have to do them, but they have to be investigated. So um, let's look at audits first and then I'll look at water management plans. So um, in the survey, um, we did ask some open-ended questions um, as well, and we've kind of rolled up the response that we've seen. So audits in particular, there are some challenges. Um, it's hard with low participation. It's, they're voluntary, so it's hard to get um, a business's attention. You know, for them, it's business as usual. And historically, all the money has been going to the energy side. Um, if you have projects and opportunities, a lot of people will fund the energy ones, but not so much on the water side. So that's um, historically led to low participation for this program. Over time, that is slowly changing as water is getting more expensive, um, infrastructure is changing, but that's historically been a challenge. Um, trust and confidentiality um, consequences has been tough. Um, a lot of businesses don't want to release all their information. Um, for example, if you have a couple of hotels in a specific area, they don't want that information to get out of like occupancy. Obviously, occupancy is driving that water use. So that's um, one thing to take in consideration when we're working on audits in particular um, is the confidentiality of that information that's shared. Um, time to get them done, of course, and um, the uh, savings, you know, it's hard sometimes to see a savings when you have a huge site and you change out a couple toilets where you really see it in the overall water use. That's historically been a challenge. It's getting a little bit different, you know, as we get more metering real-time technology and AMI and things that may shift, but it's still a challenge um, on the CII side with like a kitchen, for example, that has so many different devices all in use all at once. You know, um, everything from a dishwasher to kitchen to spray valve, you know, you name it, all working at the same time. It's hard to see the savings from one particular implementation of a, of a um, audit recommendation, for example. Um, and energy versus water, again, that's a challenge. How do you um, roadmap back the savings, especially when things aren't submeters? Um, so this is just welcome to the commercial space. It's a little complicated. Um, we definitely know that. We've been doing water audits um, for over 20 years. We also train water audits. So we're very familiar with the field and the challenges. It doesn't mean it can't be done. So I'm gonna switch over to the opportunity side. Um, sometimes you can work um, you know, with corporates. Um, there are sustainability officers now um, and you can get relationships if you're working with your biggest users or like a university. Um, you can do self-certification. People have been talking about that. Maybe with some green building or some energy mixed in. Um, those are things that we've been hearing are working well. Um, is the staff, staff implemented or is this consultant implemented? That's been a question we've been hearing, um, but opportunity you know, to maybe team and get some of these done. Um, and we're gonna talk about San Diego and how they you know, um, are thinking about this space. And then also climate change funding. 
there are different um, things um, in play and in motion recently um, with the change administration. So that's something to think about um, and because funding obviously and staffing is always a challenge. Um, this program is no different. So uh, next slide, please. So it's just a little bit deeper dive um, on the water audit. Um, so what are we looking at? Um, obviously we, we need to analyze this um, and in diving a little bit deeper is the threshold. So if we are gonna do audits, how many, right? Um, are we gonna do like um, the top 10% of your users? Are we gonna do, you know, the top 1%? Um, and that would make difference. Uh, if I'm a small agency, that might just be a handful of businesses. But if I'm a large agency um, like LADWP, we mentioned that a minute ago, well, this is gonna be like thousands of businesses per year. Is that really practical? So one thing we're, uh, you know, uh, talking about and want more feedback on so we can, you know, put that in the paper would be maybe different thresholds for different agencies, you know, what they need to do or not do. Um, and then overall, like, um, if we're going to do 10% over what time period, you have to do 10% of your, you know, accounts or your volume by what, uh, five years, or is it 10 years, or is it every year? So those are the things that we're trying to navigate through. Um, what is uh, feasible, what's practical, what's um, realistic in terms of actually achieving what the goal is, which is to save water. So those are the, some of the things. And so feedback is definitely welcome. It, case studies, examples, if you're doing any, um, or if you started it um, and had challenges or started and had successes, that's what we're looking for. We are collecting case studies as well. So please submit those. Um, or if you know someone else that has some, um, definitely let them know. Let us know and um, participate in the survey and give us feedback that way as well. Next slide, please. So um, how did the survey results come out on this particular measure? Again, a little bit deeper dive. Um, so uh, the blue again is the high priority. So we got 35% of people saying uh, high priority on the indoor side um, and 10% said, you know, liar, lower priority and 30% said feasible. So we've kind of got like, you know, 60% saying it's, it's feasible, you know, between, you know, zero to 10 years. So it's kind of got feedback for the indoor side. Next slide, please. And irrigation survey audits, um, more popular. So like Lisa said, we're hearing a lot of landscape. Um, so this one's like 80% of people are saying, however, 60% are saying um, higher priority, um, zero to five years, and 20% are saying lower priority, um, and then a, a handful, you know, of the other answers. Um, but two thirds of the respondents so far um, think this should be a high priority to do it on the outside. Next slide, please. So let's do a little bit of a discussion on the water management plans. Um, so audits and water management plans at this point are voluntary. Um, so what, what should people prepare? You know, again, like what does a plan include? Um, how deep are we going? How many do you have to do? These are the questions we're talking about. Who should prepare the plan? If you're gonna do a water management plan, again, a water management plan is a little bit deeper. It's kind of like an action plan. It's like a roadmap. So maybe you work with, um, I don't know, someone like uh, Hewlett Packard or a Hilton Hotel or, you know, something like that. And you, you work with this customer, your large customer again, and, and kind of create a roadmap on how they can, you know, become more water efficient or reduce their water footprint over time. Um, but then the question becomes, who's doing this? Is it the business that's doing it? Is the utility staff that's doing it? How would that be required? Um, what tools would we use? You know, um, are we going to use Energy Star Portfolio? Do we need a new tool to collect this data? Um, clearly, we're not the first group to do this. Um, energy um, side, Energy Star Portfolio collects this data all the time. So it's, do we tack onto that, add more water? Or do we start something new? Um, and who should be included? Um, is it processed water, non-processed water? Like, again, our state um, is quite uh, diverse in terms of the different businesses. So that's all something to um, keep into consideration as we move forward if we're going to do water management plans. Next slide, please. Uh, so again, um, we, we looked at the irrigation survey audits, 60% um, uh, again liked it. So again, hearing a lot on the outside side. Next slide, please. Oh, I think we went backwards. So there we go. <laughs> oh, now we went two ahead. Can we go back one slide? There we go, water management plans. Um, so we got interesting response on this um, that most people were thinking it was feasible but not for five to 10 years. So what we're hearing is that if we're gonna go the water management plan, the feedback is that they're more sophisticated and would take more time and therefore would be slightly further out um, 
uh, in time. If, it, if we did it, half the group said that, uh, it'd have to be five to 10 years. Again, the audits were, you know, could be done sooner um, according to these responses um, and or removed from the list. A third of the group said, just take them off the list. You know, we're not interested in this activity or not useful. So 43% um, of the people said not useful or remove it. So that's an interesting, di uh, you know, list, but slightly later, this is kind of what we're hearing or, or take it off the list. Um, next slide, please. And then alternative sources um, for non-potable. Um, again, um, similar response actually. 47% um, said uh, feasible for future implementation, like kind of further out in time, five to 10 years, or not useful or um, remove it from the list. So these are a little bit less popular um, overall. Next slide, please. And then we also um, considered a top uh, users program. So again, this would be like working with your top customer and maybe providing them a slightly different incentive. So typically, um, most people have been historically treating the commercial customers as like a one size fits all, you know, that you can get toilets or you can get, you know, uh, rebates for this. Um, but some people have put in, in place a customized user program that allows you to fund larger projects that allows you to get um, maybe a slightly different funding pool to be able to accomplish things um, on a larger scale and therefore save more water. But they are more complicated. Um, and so, so far, most people are saying maybe in the future, um, you know, uh, that's the, the biggest response. Um, and then, you know, kind of a handful of others. So again, they're seeing this as a little bit more sophisticated um, and maybe not um, at this time, but potentially in the future. Next slide. So where are we at? Um, Lisa mentioned it, I'm gonna repeat it again. We do need some more input. Um, we would like some, um, we have an annotated outline that is coming out. You're welcome to look at it. Again, it just shows what we're gonna include in the paper. We kind of feel this is like, we, we volunteered to help just because we realized that we wanted to have someone uh, like to be working on this that had actually been in the field. We actually have done these audits. And so we were, we were kind of volunteering, but we want help us help us help everyone to kind of get that feedback together and be that objective voice so that we can kind of um, get where everyone is at and what we think is gonna work best um, in the state. Um, we're definitely looking at um, the survey. Um, I did put that in the chat. We'd love additional um, information um, and there will be additional meetings, um, which is gonna be on our schedule. Our next meeting, um, next slide please, is coming up um, on May 24th. Um, but before we dive into that, we kind of wanted some feedback on anyone's lessons learned and or if anything is pragmatic for you. So this is kind of a, a listening session, um, you know, for us, you know, without, you know, the, the big formality of the group and we would love more feedback. Um, and I see Justin Finch has raised his hand. So welcome, Justin, and um, go ahead, please unmute and we'd love to hear your feedback. Oh, thanks, Michelle. Hey, this is what you get for inviting Orange County to the meeting. Oh, no, it's um, all good. You're welcome. <laughs> no, I just, I had a question about the water management plans, and I think, um, I'm just wondering if you could expand a little bit more on what those would be and, and sort of like what the scopes would be, because I think, you know, some of us have seen water management plans for very large facilities. You know, I'm thinking of one in particular uh, in a past life that was you know, like 60 pages for a state facility, you know, um, it was like a 20 acre property. And so we had a lot of stuff that could happen, but at the same time, you know, there's a McDonald's that could participate in an audit. And it's like, I don't know that their management plan would be 60 pages. You know, perhaps it would be simply like, hey, you should upgrade your toilets. Everything else, you know, is like good to go. So our would there perhaps be like a range of, of what management plans could, could be? And maybe that name management plan is, is although a good name is, is artificially scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's really Wait. great feedback, <laughs> Justin. And I, I think you're, you're warming up to some of the comments we're hearing of people are like, well, what is a water management plan exactly anyways? How's that different than an audit? You know, um, and I think the answer is, yeah, it's just a little bit more in depth. So if you look at um, ASHRAE and you look at the energy side of things, they, they, they do their audits in levels. We don't do that so much on the water side yet, or, or I don't know if we're going to go there, but they have like a level one, level two, and level three. 
So a level one audit is like literally going in the facility, looking around and, you know, maybe, maybe writing a letter with some bullet points, but you're not really doing a whole lot of math, right? So that's kind of like, um, maybe like way back when, when we did the Honeywell program and we were replacing the spray valves and you were just kind of going in, finding things and replacing them and maybe feeding back what you saw. Um, that would be kind of like a level one. Like you're just checking, maybe replacing things, but you're not doing a lot of math. A level two audit is what this in my mind is um, the water audits that we're talking about of where you go out, you go to a facility, you write a report, you give them some suggestions, recommendations. Um, a level three audit is what you're kind of alluding to, which is, you know, you're getting in a little bit deeper, it's longer, maybe more funds, you know, things like that. And that's technically a level three audit and or like designing something, maybe like a new process. We've done a, I did a cheese plant in Pletaluma and um, they wanted some uh, $100,000 um, to retrofit their cheese plant, but they were gonna save like 80% of the water on the site and it was a huge user. So the question was, well, could the water utility cost share with them $50,000 um, each to make that project work? So that would be an example of like slightly a little bit more, like that was more on the industrial side. We did help them. So they sent us out there to say, hey, is this a legitimate project or not? You know, so we went out and looked at it. Um, so that might be crossing the barrier, you know, um, between a management plan and maybe you follow up, I would say, um, and or maybe you're doing multiple different, one question has come up, which I thought was a really good one. They're like, well, what if we work with Hilton? But think about all the Hiltons that are in California, you know, and they're crossing service areas. We have all these lines of service areas and stuff like that, but businesses don't necessarily always work that way. Um, so, so how would it be if we did a water management plan with all of Hilton? Or what if we did a water management plan with all of, you know, um, a particular restaurant chain or a hotel, um, like a grocery chain? Uh, so, so there's a lot of questions and, and we're trying to sort through that and what that might look like. Um, but these are some of the questions yeah. that have been coming up. So yeah, Lisa, go ahead, you can chime in. I was gonna say, we're also looking for examples uh, and the level of, you know, the white paper, I feel like, might have a couple bullets or, you know, it thoughts, basic thoughts about what a water management plan might be or, or this concept of thresholds and, you know, not only how many, but, you know, if there's levels or what the ideas really are. From the white paper, Diva is looking to make recommendations. So the more you can help us back up, you know, the ideas that you have of what's reasonable and feasible, you know, and, and you feel cost effective for your time to do uh, would be really helpful, including, you know, costs. Now, you know, this is some people are perceiving unfunded mandate, right? So there's a lot of questions about, you know, how much do we need to do in this space that's useful for us and our agency? Um, you know, there's perceived that there would be conservation potential in CI. Most of us know, you know, that uh, it hasn't been fully tapped in this sector, but it is really complex, um, can take time, specialized knowledge. We've only been given one example so far of a audit report, and it was from the city of Santa Rosa. So anyone that wants to offer up, you know, a, what a, you know, reasonable format would look like or can back up our examples would be great. You know, uh, we've gone to, and and we know Santa Barbara uses just a few pages. You know, you're talking to financial managers, you're trying to sell them on the costs. We do pictures, we do payback calculations. You know, we try and keep it um, impactful, value added, but short. You know, it's kind of where we've uh, kind of moved to. Um, so, but people have different ideas and there's different scales and, you know, some water management plans and in, in processes and the customers need something that's fully engineered, you know, so just depends what you think's most useful for customers in your area. So, um, but um, the surveys and the water management plans were specifically called out in the legislation. So we will say something on them. So the, the more that you can, help us inform or give examples on those would be really helpful. And any other ideas you have on incentives, policies, regulations, things that are working for you and barriers that you see where things would not work um, would be very informative. And Monday's meeting is set up as the first hour has breakout sessions. It's a workshop format. It's a little different this time than the last two meetings we wanna do. Uh, we've requested more listening time. Um, we've also have uh, 
and want to have more information on um, uh, the second hour is a full open stakeholder meeting for open comments too. So come prepared, anyone that's on this call, you're welcome to join and please comment there too. The benefit of DWR and everyone else participating and for us. So the short answer to your question, Justin, is it's not defined. It is not no, defined in legislation. So <laughs> yeah, it's just lists exactly what you said. It's like three words, a water management plan. And, and so the, the definition and um, I would say exact details of length and complexity are still not defined at this time. So that's a direct answer to your question. Thank you so much. That that helps because I think maybe that explains why we're all still like cross-eyed. Yeah, on the topic I know. I'm like, we need a yet, cheat sheet. Fine. Like, could you? Mm -hmm. But no one submitted any, you know. But like, we need to like give an example of like, well, here's one, you know, that we could use. But because no one's been providing them, we can't really send them out to the group, you know, because they're also sometimes um, business sensitive. That was earlier on my challenges slide, you know. So we're um, hoping that people will provide some that we can share out. So yeah, if you have any, we're, we're all ears. All right, um, any other questions? So I'll read this out. Um, and we have ranked these CI BMPs in orders of most effective for water savings. Um, it looks like people are um, um, doing incentives or uh, water surveys, um, our second place. Uh, policy regulations, right now our third. Education measures like training are fourth and water management plans are fifth. Um, so it's similar to what we've been seeing. But if this is what you're thinking, again, go back to the chat, fill in the survey, that would be um, super, super helpful. Um, and again, if you don't have the link to the poll EV, uh, maybe Anika could post it again if you joined us. Um, and uh, we will be doing a couple more questions for this and uh, water loss as well. Um, so- uh, uh, And the uh, WUI standards at water.ca.gov would get to Sabrina and us too um, directly. Please feel free to uh, comment. And so again, if you're not on full yeah. easy yet, you can just click in and you can join anytime and then you can um, answer these questions live. So uh, next question, please. So this is like a open-ended one. Um, so we wanna hear from you. Um, so what is your largest concern for meeting the measure requirement? So we just thought we would kind of leave it open-ended. Um, like you were saying, Justin, maybe people feel management plans are scary, like whatever it is. So if you type in an answer, then we can see it. Um, and then the, this is kind of like an, a different type of question. So we're just kind of an open dialogue. Um, so we'd love to hear from you guys um, either this way in chat or you can unmute, um, but we're here to listen to see um, based on everything we've said so far, everything you've heard, um, where, where's your biggest concern at this point? Technical knowledge, that's a good one, yep. I like that one, we've heard that one a bit. Worried about feasibility. Yes, that's, that's definitely another one. Staff limitations and technical knowledge. Yep. Wasting a lot of paper and ink in one area while not saving enough measurable water in, in other areas. Staffing. Balance enforcement with political climate. Participation. Mm -hmm. Cost, lack of staff and technical knowledge. I'm hearing technical knowledge is a theme here and staff. I've, I've heard, you know, those ones in common. Staff time and cost. Like I said, here comes another one. <laughs> Similar theme there. So, yeah. Uh, required number of surveys and audits and reporting. Okay, yeah, that gets, that's getting back to the thresholds question we were talking about earlier. Like, how many are we talking? Are we talking five? Are we talking 50? Are we talking 105? You know, or 1,005, depending on your thing. Staff time, no water saved, staff time. Okay, yeah, you're a lot so, of nap time. Yeah, I'll, I'll offer too, you know, the stakeholders are broad in the DOR process. So staff time is important, but the more that you can uh, maybe offer some focused comments, like our focus is outdoor because that's, you know, a non-essential use more. And we feel like the CI sector has more essential use and we're gonna target, you know, a limited amount there because we need to focus in other areas or you know prop to 18 cost of service is a cost constraint i mean we need a little more than staff time and staff training would be helpful if you can be a little more explicit on you know time effort i i understand staffing constraints um but i the more that you can 
back us up with uh, more examples or offer up case studies would be really helpful and broadening the um, discussion and the, the backup. Yep. Because um, I think some stakeholders don't... perceive, well, you can just cut, charge more for your water and hire more staff and get it done. So that's, you know, what would your response be to that is kind of where we're, you could use some support <laughs> and thoughts. Thank you. And thank you for everyone that feedback. Um, you know, the lack of regional response and planning constraints of financial systems and to reclassify the CI customers. Yeah, a lot of people still don't know. Um, that's kind of a, another part of the CI DMP is like, who, where are my hotels? Where are my restaurants? I just have one general category. So that, that is a challenge. CI is small percent of water use. Our larger city is landscape meters and that will be a large task to manage. So yeah, these are all, you know, valid, you know, concerns and, and we appreciate the, the dialogue. So um, we have about another minute or so. Does anybody want to chime in and offer any success stories or challenge, story, um, challenge stories other than Justin? And thank you for your comment, Justin, in Orange County. Oh, someone raised their hand. Um, Jordan Pinkin, you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Um, I'm from the city of Yuba City. And I was curious, you mentioned the idea of having um, a cost sharing program to improve um, efficiency. And I was wondering who are the partners in those cost share programs? Is it, is it like a public private partnership or, um, or, or something else? Cause I, I guess um, like in our environment, we're really tight on the idea of gifting public funds to mm -hmm private institutions. I can take that one, Lisa. I think the partnership sure. can come in a couple different formats. Um, uh, I know in the Santa Rosa region, uh, uh, Sonoma County region, they did a nice partnership um, between, um, it was like a local um, training group. Um, um, and they- Economic development. Yeah. yeah, and they basically provided like all the staff to get, uh, they were doing a turf replacement program um, and they went out and, um, you know, kind of we're using local staff um, to, to get it done. So, um, but the agency provided the funds. So like we just said staff, 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 you know, right? Like that was a common theme. So they were lacking staff. Well, the other volunteer organization was lacking funds, you know, right? So it was like, you know, the two hands needed to kind of come together to get the program done. Um, so that's um, one of um, example, um, but, there, but there are others. Um, yeah, there are energy. Um, has has slowly been coming to the table. There's been fits and starts of kind of water energy nexus, but there has been some renewed discussions. Um, working with your um, uh, retailer, um, of course, um, or in the regions um, has been one discussion. Um, so I would say another all, is all, the, the, all of the above. <laughs> you know? Another would be to calculate the value of your water saved so that you are recouping, you know, a cost savings too from the investment. So creating it more like your own return on investment to your utility, which is the same payback return on investment the cost the business side is doing. So that's where kind of that public private, you're the public side, they're the private side. Um, we're also, you know, if there's grant funds or other things that can go to these programs or um, and some economic development, you know, partnership or money too has been uh, brought to the table. The other is, you know, the extent that you can promote it, you know, with the businesses uh, in terms of either some are linked to green business programs or other things where they get you know, their benefits. Um, maybe not be not, you know, monetary public private partnership, but some other credit or, you know, goals that the corporation has. There's a lot right. of sustainability goals that are being met through some of these programs that you can tap into as well. And sometimes it's just the facility manager needs the, you know, justification to ask for the money. We know some of the hotel chains, for example, work that way where mm -hmm. they have local control or the ability to go after money, you know, if they have the justification like a report. Yeah, so a direct answer to your question is it could potentially be private partnerships. Um, I know, for example, some of the um, hotel chains, you know, have sustainability officers and not just the hotels, but there are other industries as well. Um, and so you could potentially team with the business themselves. Again, you're looking at your largest customers. 
And so if it matches their corporate vision or sustainability, you know, roadmap or I'm throwing whatever word you want, but we're, they're, they're uh, back, way back when they didn't have scalability officers, but now they do. And so those, um, if you can get to that person and work with that person, um, they may have funds or the ability to get funds um, and or get projects through. So I would say it's, it's all of that. Um, the answer is a little bit um, uh, custom. <laughs> different. Yeah, I was sorry, custom. Thinking, yeah, custom, depending on your service area, you know, who yeah. your biggest customer is. It might be you have a big, you know, university. It might be, you know, you have um, a large, thing, yeah. you know, hospitality section. It might be, you know, you've got a lot of industry. So it just depends on, you know, where your area is to the answer to that question. So that's why it's a little complicated, like we were saying earlier. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, yeah it does. I, I like the point on the idea of um, calculating that value safe. So it, it takes it more from a, a gift of funds to a CIP action and actually yeah. recouping correct. that cost. So That's yeah, correct. thanks. Yeah, thank you for the mm -hmm. question. That was a really good one. Anyone else before we move on? Great. Well, um, thank you so much for um, all those questions. So if we want to go on to um, the back to the slides. So we do have a couple of resources for you. Um, and on our next slide, we have some um, uh, just six resources. So a lack of knowledge. I heard that one. That was a really common theme. So one step in the right direction is to offer you these six, um, six resources. There's links to all of them. Um, there's a CI task force manual. There's a um, kitchen guide from EPA Water Sense. Um, we did help on one of these manuals. Um, these are all free. Um, uh, EPA Water Sense has one. Uh, we helped author um, and one um, on water audit guidance. So if people aren't sure what water audits are, that was a huge challenge for, for so long. They're like, well, nobody defines what an audit is anyways. You know, does it have calculations or not or what's in it? So we helped write um, a guidebook on it and that link is there, it's free. Um, and uh, it helps kind of further define um, what's included in audit. Um, so hopefully some of these resources help with that knowledge gap. And then, you know, that is something that we will obviously include that if people are gonna be required to do this, there has to be somewhere to get that information. So hopefully this is a small step in that right direction. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over, um, to next slide please. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to um, uh, just wrapping up this little section. And then we're gonna look at a San Diego survey. So our next meeting, um, please join us. Lisa and I will be there. Um, is on May um, 24th at 10 a.m. Um, and oh, and June 28th is uh, also at 10 a.m. Um, those those have been switched, so they're both um, 10 a.m. Um, on May 24th and June 28th. Um, and so um, hopefully you can join us. Um, they should be the next one on May 24th, as Lisa alluded to, is going to be slightly different. It's going to have breakout rooms and um, a lot more dialogue. Um, so hopefully we can hear um, what everyone's really experiencing in the field. Um, so with that, I'm going to next slide, please. Um, turn it over. So we thought it would be kind of interesting to hear from you. Obviously that other survey was kind of like the whole state and everything, but we um, worked with um, San Diego County Water Authority and they put together a survey. So thank you for those of you tur that turned it in. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Elizabeth and she's gonna give you a summary um, for those of you that filled it in. Um, and this has two topics. Um, it's a little bit of a wrap up of performance measures. And then it's also starting our water loss topic, which Elizabeth is going to present as well. So with that, I will turn it over to Elizabeth. All right, thank you. Next slide, please. And these were sent out to everyone that signed up. Oops, wrong direction. Oh, yeah, there you go. This was sent out to everyone who signed up for the workshop. And um, we were just looking for additional information for the CII and for water loss. And so one of the things we were looking for, um, classifications is one of the things that DWR is looking at. Um, for billing systems and, and CII. So we, we kind of looked, dived into that. So um, have you made any large changes to the classification in your billing system in the past five year? And the answer to that was a, a resounding no. Um, do you plan on changing your billing system in the next three year? Most people said no. Um, others said maybe you're on the no. So that was a not a whole lot of people looking at making billing system changes. What classifications do you use for your current CII account? Um, most people use a generic category for billing purposes, so it's not not using um, NAPES or um, APNs. Um, 
it looks like the, the biggest one is the, the just a specific each agency billing purposes. There's also other and unknown is a big one. So there's there's a lot to um, keep learning on the billing and classifications. Next slide, please. And then we wanted to kind of look at, um, we know that DWR is putting together these standards, but how, how much of the standard, um, um, how much is this is the standard gonna affect people and how much water could this potentially save? And so what we asked for is, what percentage of your utilities counts are CII customers? So most people answered that they were more than 3%. Um, we also had some answers that, that people weren't sure or that they were two to 3%. And when we asked for what their percentage of the utility built total volume, total water volume was after the drought, um, most people said they were between 11 and 15%. Um, there were some that was between six and 10, others between 16 and 20. We had none for over 20% and others were unsure. So, you know, looking at this, this information, we want to make sure that there's not, that whatever is required in, for CII is, um, is adequate for it is is um, equivalent to what how much water they're actually using. So we don't have so many um, requirements in CII that that you're using a lot of resources to get just a chase a little bit of water savings. Next slide, please. Um, this is the AMI system. Again, we we saw that um, in um, the the last survey as well. How, how many people have AMI systems? Four people have it. Um, one is um, installing one, pilot projects. Um, they're looking at prices. It's too cost prohibitive and there's no interest at this time. So it's kind of all along the board on AMI systems. And um, for those that have AMI systems, how many customers are covered? Um, most of them were 90 to 100%. Some of them had 60 to 80% covered as well. And then um, for those that had AMI, all of their accounts, residential and CII are covered. Next slide, please. Now we look at the CII programs. Um, we were, were kind of interested in, in, this was kind of for the San Diego area, um, who was offering what programs, just the regional programs or people had local ones as well. So we had three that just did the regional programs and one that has a, a local program as well. And then um, really uh, even split on ad offering additional CII programs, um, regional programs, more local programs, um, no concern about CII or, or other. So next slide. And then barriers for offer offering additional CII programs, cost, lack of customer interest and staff limitations. So kind of what we saw in the survey we just did. Next slide. And audits, um, how many people have them? Three people answered that they have indoor and outdoor audits and uh, one person answered they didn't have one. Um, and why don't, why have you or have you not done CI audits? Um, good customer service, unknown, they're not cost effective, lack of customer interest or an other. We had one answer on each of those. Next slide, please. Meter conversions, there was um, no, no uh, programs for meter conversions. And the reasons there weren't, it was either unknown, not cost-effective, did not result in savings and lack of customer interest. It's, and this is one of the concerns we have with um, any recommendation that might, might come out of the legislation on meter conversions. Next slide. Um, sorry, Jamie, did you have a question? Yes, thank you. Um, one of the ideas that we thought of just recently for CII, because we all know adding a second meter for CII, for landscape or whatever, that's really gonna be really expensive. But maybe a cost-effective way to help some of these CII customers is like a flume device, because that will help differentiate indoor and outdoor watering. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, another technology is one of the things that's listed in the legislation. And um, I think the challenge is, is, is I think it's, it's almost there. I think it's, it's gonna be um, um, 
actually being able to get it to, to work and um, for an agency to be able to see the data. I think it would work great for the customer, but I think um, what DWR is looking for is to split the meters or split the water use so they can regulate the outdoor use and then not, not go after the indoor use. So, so I, think, I think that's actually a good, a good solution moving forward. We're doing a flume project right now, and I can see all of our participants' data on the flume website. Okay, great. Okay, now on to anything else on commercial? Now we're gonna switch over to water loss. Elizabeth, uh, this is Gary, I don't, I don't know. Uh, you know, yeah, putting a second meter, that's, that's expensive, but the problem is schools or your commercial establishments, it's not just a matter of a second meter. How is that system plumbed? In other words, is that system segregated? So you can easily, you know, meter the uh, irrigation water, or is it built so that you're feeding both irrigation and buildings at the same time? So it's not just a matter of the cost of a meter. It's it's asking that customer now to redo their their whole plumbing system in their facility, which is probably not going to happen. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, great point. All right, anything else on CII? Jeannie, did you have your hand up again? No, sorry, I forgot to lower it. I just okay. wanna say, I think Gary had a really good point. I think the more that you can bring up, you know, barriers like feasibility like that, we intend to bring those up and the more, you know, examples or cost. If you've done any math on the cost, would be really helpful. You know, um, we have some limited case studies too, but we would really appreciate more comments like that coming forward. Because I think there is maybe some push to only do it on new accounts, for example, or things like that. You know, what is feasible, what's not feasible. That's exactly the type of comments we want to hear. Thank you. Well, I, I think we're all doing it on the new new systems. Uh, everybody gets an irrigation meter and a service meter, and they're told to plumb separately. So it's already implemented. But to go retro, retro, to, especially the schools, uh, asking them to spend that kind of money on redoing their systems is just not going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. That's what I'm hearing from a lot of people. Yeah. All right, switching over to water loss. Um, do you submit? Oh. What caused your real water loss to change? Left all in place. Um, this is an important one. I mean, I think this is really telling that most people that had changes to the real water loss, it's due to changes in data. Um, for some, it's changes in infrastructure, um, uh, reduction in water use. Um, out of all the answers, this is this is the one that's water loss prevention actions. So, as the state board is putting together um, water loss regulations, this is something to keep in mind: is that most of the water, real water water loss changes are really due to data, and um, not a lot of people are seeing it due to preventative actions. So, next slide, please. All right, so now I'm gonna go over and do an overview of water loss. Um, I'm gonna give uh, Amy Talbot a lot of credit for this because I asked her what I should put in this presentation and she told me and I put it in there. Um, she's really the guru of water loss. Um, we're gonna, this is gonna be a quick overview and we're gonna do a deeper dive um, in one of our future meetings. Um, next slide, please. Um, just looking at standards development, Again, the formal rule breaking, this has been pushed back a lot. So um, the current date that we have is August of 2021. Um, it had been June. That's kind of why we planned to start this at this point, because it was supposed to be starting in June, but it's, it's now pushed back to August. When that formal rulemaking starts, there's gonna be a 45 day comment period. Um, we're really encouraging people to comment on this. Um, the state board has been most responsive to individual agencies saying these are our specific problems, um, focus on the feasibility of meeting the standards. We think once they start that, that rulemaking process, it's probably not gonna last an entire year. It'll probably be short of that. Um, even before the rulemaking process starts, um, CMUA and Aqua and others continue to advocate for um, improved off-ramps, variances in the, in the water loss, extended timeframe for changes, 
They have some specific dates for changes, extended baseline year, and then a compliance plan option. So some agencies have really high percentage of water loss that they have to obtain. You know, some of them, um, you know, 90, 50, 70%, they have to reduce their water loss. And in that, they need to come, come up with a different option for, for getting compliance. Next slide, please. So the components of the water loss, um, there's several different components. Um, first is a supplier specific standard. That's gonna be set using an economic model and you have to be in compliance by 2028. In addition to that standard, there are also gonna be questionnaires on data quality, asset management and pressure management. Um, you can do adjustments to the economic model. You can put in your own information currently. In fact, um, we're encouraging everyone that has any uh, um, user specific data available to put in their model to put that in now and see if it changes their standard. Um, really want to get that done before the end of the 45 day comment period, even before that 45 day comment period, if you, if you can, um, just to see how, how that impacts those impacts are, those changes impact the model and in, in the, in the standards. Um, there will be variances and there will be alternative pathways for suppliers with low loss and high data quality. That's a very limited pathway for, for suppliers with very low loss, very low loss. Next slide, please. So the supplier specific target, targets, they were originally released in December of 2020. Um, you can find, they have default values in the model. You can um, find the list of targets at that link right there. It, it tells you what your current use is, what your baseline use is, and what your target is. Um, in April, they released another model. Um, minor changes were made based on a peer review. Um, we don't expect a large changes in the targets, but it could there could be some. And again, you can find that at the link. All of this is under the water boards. Um, website. If you go into there and, and look, you know, water board and water loss, they have a whole page on that with, with all kinds of links and information if you want to, are interested in kind of pursuing that. Next slide, please. What you can do is customize the model. Again, I got this list from Amy. She said, where to start? Um, look at the in infrastructure condition, condition factor, survey frequency, average pressure, rate of rise and marginal avoided cost of water areas to look at. Um, again, prior to the end of the 40 day comment period, you can submit that to S, uh, the state water board and they'll include that in, make sure you're, then, you're, then you will know your standard is going to be adjusted um, according to those updated um, factors. Next slide, please. Other actions to take. Um, Really document, document, um, I, I can't say this enough, what, what they've really kind of looked at is what is the cost of water loss work? Um, how much is being saved? I mean, I think that, you know, why, why, why is your real, life, real loss going up or down? I think that the more we can document these things, the, the better off we are, um, especially moving forward. Um, if your data has changed and you can um, retroactively, you know, apply those changes back further, Review your 2017 to 2020 audits. Um, and again, prior to the end of the 45 day comment period, submit changes to the water board. So your baseline is correct. And um, continue to meet and to identify challenges that you might have in meeting your standards, especially if you're one of those agencies that has a really high percent reduction that you have to, that you have to take. Next slide. So there are resources out there. Um, AWWA is doing training tomorrow and next week. It's a full day of classes where you get to really do a deep dive into the, um, the audits and um, the, the model. Um, the state board does have guidance that you can look at to kind of look at what the, what's in their model and, and um, what their, their assumptions are. And then again, um, next month we'll have be having another workshop like this where we're going to kind of really focus on um, water loss and start to look at go deeper into some of these issues in advance of the August um, rulemaking process. So again, we can we can really inform our advocacy even before that that August date. Next slide, please. So um, just questions. Um, how are you feeling about the water loss targets? And do you have any 
suggestions for alternative compliance. Um, one of the things we're looking at is for those that have really large, um, you know, percent percentage they have to reduce by, um, what would be an alternative compliance? And the, the idea would be you put together a plan that says I'm going to um, implement a leak survey or or um, or other things, and that even if you don't meet your target, if you're as long as you're following your compliance plan, then you would be in compliance with the, the legislation. But we're looking at for, for information about who would who would um, qualify for that, and um, what kind of components would be in there. So do we have any feedback? You know, Elizabeth, I do have a poll EV um, question, very similar to that, so I could pop that up and we could uh, get some, see if folks want to write some answers down. Yeah. Or it's very similar anyway. All right, good questions. Not enough data. Not so worried about this one. Off ramps. Yes, that's that's a that's a good one. I mean, the model and the um, the standards are certainly complex. Meeting the standards consistently. Yeah. This, unlike the other performance standards that are going into the long-term efficiency standard will be actually regulated separately. So you could be meeting your overall water use efficiency standard, but if you're not meeting your water loss performance standard, um, they actually, um, you, you could be subject to regulate uh, uh, actions, fines and Yeah. It's like a variability of water loss from your year. I think we have one more interesting question. Anaki, maybe we do that one now too, which is what's your biggest, I just don't want someone, they're not worried about this one, but maybe they're, um, um, so this is like an overall question, um, just the overall objective requirements. Um, do you guys have concerns in general? Your amount of data that's good meeting the standards consistently so this is like a global elizabeth of everything we've covered today it is i agree with the sheer amount of data yeah each each one has its own you know information All right, and do we have one more on a key? We might as well do that now. And then just, oh, there's one, residential agricultural and indoor standard. Staff time for keeping up with the data needs. Yeah, the variances, those are all good. We found a number of the utilities have gone to like data managers, data keepers to like try and keep the data information consistent and organized and there's so a lot right. more reporting required. So this response is to one of the earlier ones I saw that you're not really worried about the water loss one. So we're curious to know um, which ones you want to learn about. So we're going to have the meeting um, in June to focus on that one's going to be on water loss. But we're curious if there's um, other areas, you know, that you'd like to hear more about. Um, 
So we're looking for feedback from you guys on um, which topics, you know, would be most helpful at this point. For outdoors and best practices seem pretty popular. All right. All right. Well, there we go. Outdoor standards and CI best practices. All right. Well, that was very helpful. Um, thank you for letting us know. Um, oh, a couple more in there. <laughs> Indoor standards. Okay. We are going to go ahead to the wrap up slides. Oh, how would you rate today's seminar? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> We're going to do some wrap up stuff. Yeah. We didn't have time to get to the indoor, so um, we did want to let everyone know that there is a workshop on that on Friday um, where they're looking at the, the indoor standards. Um, we have some concerns about the, the limitations of the studies that have been done for indoor, and, um, and we do want to make sure that, um, that, that the issues that were put into the legislation are fully addressed before a standard is finalized. And so um, look forward to that meeting on Friday. Yeah, we have a summary of all the um, additional information coming. Since we saw that you liked indoor standards, we can definitely cover that um, in the next one, in the next meeting. Um, so the indoor water use, the biggest one is the change. This one slide here, Elizabeth, we can cover is that they're looking at the standards and comments are due June 4th. So if you're interested, chime in. Um, they're looking to lower them. They're currently um, 55 GPCD, everyone knows that one. Then they're looking at 47 and 42. So if that's interesting to you, chime in. Comments are due June 4th. Um, yeah. Next slide, Anaki. And then um, we just have some dates to show you. Um, yeah. yeah, Elizabeth is going to go ahead and go over these. Um, we can cover these in our next workshop. Um, so we will be covering that. Um, so here's a list of all the dates. I know there's a lot of them flying around. Um, so May 21st is indoor standard. Um, landscape is June 30th. That's a deadline. We mentioned that August 30th is another deadline um, for that. Um, the CI performance measures are the May 24th and June 28th at 10 a.m. Variances is June 10th and July 8th at 1 p.m. And water loss, 45-day um, um, comment period in August. So that's a mouthful. If that's not enough for your plate, there's one more slide. <laughs> this is our last one. And that is um, other additional um, things that you can attend. So there's an AWE um, drought webinar, all sponsored by CalWeb, and that's on May 25th. There's um, CalWeb's peer-to-peer uh, -peer conference, that's June 2nd and 3rd. There's a pg e water audit training for so those, some of you earlier that wanted to do the lack of knowledge for water audits. Well, this is a free water audit training. Anyone is welcome to come. Um, and we can send that link out if you're interested. There's a San Diego workshop number four. We think we will cover water loss, but maybe we'll pick up some of those additional topics that you just voted on. So thanks for your feedback on that. And then um, workshop number five is still TBD. Um, that one will be in August and we'll um, obviously take the feedback that you just gave us in consideration and then also see where things are at at that point. As we know, it's a moving target um, and we will try and keep meeting and um, have feedback and information for everyone. So Elizabeth, any other final words before we wrap up? Thank and thank you. you so much for coming. It's been great. Thank you for all the dialogue and comments. There was one comment in the um, chat box. Jean had asked for a, a link. Uh, it was too long to copy down that fast. I, I didn't know if you got an answer to that. If not, I can uh, post that. I just wasn't sure which one you were talking about. Oh, um, you're going to get a copy of the slides as well. Oh, okay. So Jean, if that was a copy, if that was a comment on so water um, loss. Yeah, on anything, we're happy to share out um, the slides. So you should get a copy of that as well. Um, you'll also be uh, getting a copy of the recording. So any of this material and uh, maybe a follow up email with information on pools, um, hopefully from Jean um, from Lakeside, you're willing to share that. Um, and thank you, Gabby, for the comments um, and Deborah that you like the workshop. So thank you so much. Stay tuned for part two, put on your calendar. Again, June 29th, um, we will send out more information. And thank you so much for coming and participating. It was really great to see so many of you and for your feedback. So with that, um, thank you. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Anything else, Elizabeth? No, I think we're good. All right. Thank well, you thank very you. much.
coming. Thank you, everyone. And uh, thanks for coming. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.